This is Start with Storefront. Does submerging yourself in 44 degree water for six minutes sound fun to you? I promise you only shake for the first couple minutes. Well, thanks to people like Wim Hof and Joe Rogan, this practice has actually been gaining a lot of popularity. The benefits of ice baths or cold water therapy include reduced inflammation, pain relief, and can even boost your immune system. Some people fill metal tubs with bags upon bags of ice, while some people, like Diego, have a blue cube. Blue Cube makes high-end ice baths that keep the water chilled, flowing, and filtered so you don't have to refill your tub every day with hundreds of pounds of ice. In today's episode, we talk with David Haddad, the co-founder of Blue Cube, about the early days of starting Blue Cube in a barn in Oregon, the science behind why cold plunging is good for your health, and how long you should stay in an ice bath to reap the full benefits. So grab your towel or blanket before we plunge into this week's episode. All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show. We're talking to David from Blue Cube. Thanks for coming on the pod. For people who don't know, what does the company do? We make cold plunges, cold exposure therapy. It's awesome being here. Thanks for having me, Diego. I've been trying to meet up for a minute. And we are pinnacle expression of cold exposure. That's how we like to see ourselves. So the cold thing, it sort of has taken off in the last probably two years where it's like next level. I have one now. People like Joe Rogan talk about it all the time in terms of like the benefits and stuff. When did you guys start the company or what was the thing? Were you guys always in sort of this cold immersion or what was the beginning of the company? So our founder, Thomas, he founded it in 2020 and he was looking to buy a high end bath for himself. And being the entrepreneur that he is, when he looked at the competition and kind of examined how they were being built, he's like, wow, I could, you can build, I can build build a better one. Yeah. And he had, you know, taste and background in wood, owning nice homes. So for him, it made sense not only going high end, but making it out of particular woods in a particular way that he wanted. Mm -hmm. He felt that other people would appreciate um, his taste. Because there's really nothing else on the market, right? There was no like higher end version. There was some some competitors, some other people, but the way that they were building it, Tommy saw right through it okay. and was like, wow, they're using really low grade parts, but you know, charging an arm and a leg, I can do it better. Yeah, and then what was the first version of it? And, and was it always, so we'll talk about the moving water component to it too, but was it always, what was the first version of, of the whole? Uh, first the, version, the we had stronger flow than everyone else, but flow was not uh, the target. Okay. It was mostly uh, stainless steel, encased in uh, basically a wooden uh, cabinet or a wooden piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. We like to think about it. There was no tray dressing, no trim at all on the cabinet side. It was literally a stainless steel built into a piece of wood as a prototype. He wanted to make sure that the wood and the stainless and everything can kind of fit together how he wanted. And at the time, so 2020, do you guys think you're, you're making a gamble on the cold plunge? Are you thinking maybe this is a fad? Are you thinking like, this is for sure gonna hit? Like what is going through the process, like internal workings of the company? So Thomas, he already saw this category. In his mind, it was already like, it's just a matter of time. He was hounding me at the end of 2020 and I actually did not believe this was gonna be a category. I was a MacGyver. I was doing my horse trough and the ice. I was doing the cold showers. And in my mind, I was like, why is anyone going to be spending this amount of money when they can either do cold showers or do horse trough? And it wasn't until he invited me and I went up and I experienced it. I was like, ah, this is a cold dose that I'm not getting. And the way it simplifies my day where there's no setup times, I can get a predictable, reliable dose. I can go as aggressive as I want. I started seeing the feature set and I was like, okay. Yes, over time, the it's going to formalize yeah. into an actual product category. But I was, <laughs> I did not believe it in the beginning. And at the time, like, how much research is out there? How much research are you guys doing in terms of the benefits? Because it seems like everyone's an expert today. But I, right. I, at that time, there was very little research. It, it was uh, Wim Hof. Wim Hof was the main, I think, proponent, yeah. and that was enough for me. And I think a lot of early adopters, relative early adopters, right? Because people have been doing this forever. Mm-hmm. But I think the new phase really started with Wim Hof, you know. When he got big, it yes. exposed it to the masses. Yes. Yeah. And then his, I think, his own study that he did proving that he can regulate his immune system, how the cold was a powerful impetus for him to get over his tragedies. 
it was kind of like, oh, this is worth exploring. Yeah. It's so funny to think about it from my perspective where before I even got introduced to this door of like the Joe Rogans, the Wim Hofs of the world, which leads you down like a black hole of just doing the research. The only people that really had ever done this or the only time I had ever done this was in Florida when I was doing this cycling event. And we ended up spending a day at this like athletic, like the pure athlete gym. And this gym had everything in it, but it was only for like the elite athletes. We just got to go for the day because out, out of courtesy, we were doing this charity bike ride. And that was the first time I had done a cold plunge. And I like loved it. I like, I don't know Love why. Love the first uh, I just experience, loved it. first yeah. plunge. I just loved it. And it was like the super beautiful spa type setting. It was next to a hot tub and it was like unbelievable. I was like, this is it. Like I really, and I felt it the next day. But then I had gone 10 years without ever sort of experiencing any sort of cold therapy at all. And then, the, you know, the Joe Rogan stuff starts going, popping off. And then that leads me into this, this dark hole of, okay, research. And then it becomes like, which one do I buy, right? And so the first step was like, okay, I could, I could get the trough and I could Uber Eats ice to my house every day and then add water. But that takes a lot of time and effort. And then, so much time. So much time. Not that fun. And then it also feels kind of wasteful. It's like a lot of people in LA don't, they don't have homes where you can just dump a tremendous amount of water. Like there's no yards. A lot of people don't have yards here. Right. And so it's like the thought of doing that just also feels very wasteful. And then it's like, okay, do you want to just let the water sit there for two, three days? You know, let's say you're lazy, right? So you use right. it once and you're like, that's disgusting. Yeah. And, and then it's, it's hot in LA. Mosquito breeding ground. Right. And then it's like <laughs> the water's warm. So I'm like, that, that doesn't seem right. And then you just walk, you start walking through this analysis. You're like, wow, like there's really no cheap way of doing this if you want to solve for time. And then you get to the point of like, okay. And then the blue cube has this, like the water's always in motion. Why is that important? What's the thing there? If you don't have the water moving, you'll cold adapt. I think within a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, depending on the person. And then you're not uh, challenging yourself. You're basically cheating. And even if you use a lot of ice, uh, you're self-insulating and you can move. If you move around, you're breaking your thermal layer and you're allowing yourself a more acute dose. But ideally, you're in a body of water that's moving. That way, the heat is constantly being stripped from you. And per second, you're adapting that much more uh, to the cold versus, I don't know if you have tried like uh, some of the other competitors or even still water recently, but I've been doing it just to always go back to like day one. Yeah. And it's t night and day difference. Is it really? Yes. It's so much easier? So much easier. What happens? Your body just heats up warm, like faster because nothing else is in motion? Like the first 30 seconds to a minute, yeah. it's like, okay, this is cold. Yeah. And then you get used to it. And then it's like your body doesn't have that fight or flight going off like you do in the blue cube. Yeah. Where it's like every second you're like, crap, crap, crap. I've been doing this thing recently where I'll dunk my head and somehow that breaks it all up for me. I don't know. It's, it's probably really stupid, but I just do it because it's like, like when I get bored in there, I'm like, fuck, this is cold. I'll just dunk my head. I'll go underwater for a second. And it's like everything resets. I think it's the shock. It's like, I think, I think your, your head's in shock again. And so you, you kind of forget. You're like, you, you don't know how long it's been. You don't know the experience. And you do it, let's say after like a minute or two minutes or however long you're it's in. It's usually when I get bored. And that usually is like one thirty to two minute mark. It's in that window. And then I'll do it. And then I'll get bored again. Then I'll do it again. And that's how I know. I'm like, oh, I'm approaching six minutes. That's not a bad strategy. Yeah. 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 What other science can you tell us? Like what, what's, when you guys think about this, do you guys geek out around the science? Do you care? I do. Um, it's one of those protocols or one of those habits you can build that really is a primer to resetting your nervous system and your metabolism. I feel like it's the most elegant approach to that. And I think we're just beginning to understand all of the benefits. Obviously, you know, you mentioned that you, you did it for athletics. I think a lot of people start there. I think the biggest conversations are going to be around the mental space. I don't really think there's anything like the cold that can help somebody ground and completely reframe their perceptions around their hardships, around trauma, around the difficulty, even of the day ahead. You go in cold plunge, all of a sudden, all the anxiety you had around uh, whatever pressures you have in life, your perception around it changes. And there's other tools like, you know, uh, shrooms, psilocybin, mushrooms, I think are really powerful, but they come with side effects or you need to focus more on titration. Mm -hmm. Whereas the cold, maybe the only side effect is like hypothermia if you overdo it, but it's really hard to miscalculate or have a bad experience from the cold. 
I think there's going to be so much about the mental space. The, so th the thing for me is I typically do it more if I'm in like the middle of like a fundraise or I'm trying to close on a, on a building because it's like I tell everyone here, it's like it's the hardest part of my day and I'm choosing it. And so there's something really beautiful about that where like I'll start my day, I'll do the 9 a.m. thing. And then the rest of the day, no matter how much rejection I'm getting from the world around this idea I'm trying to bring into to the world, to Los Angeles, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, yeah. That's just part of it. Because I've already done the hardest part of the day. Right. Right. And so there's something about the mental piece for sure. It's really interesting. You're like choosing torture is also really interesting. So like I've seen Joe Rogan. He'll do it for as long as he can. Like 11 minutes. I've seen up to 20. Like 20 minutes yeah. at like 33 or 31 degrees yeah, or something. Ju basically just above what's, freezing. What's to give, give people like that are listening a window into where to start and then, and then ideally <laughs> like so maybe that, where you're at That today. video that you're describing... If Rogan knew what he knew now, I don't think he would do that again. Okay. Uh, the only reason why I say this is um, somebody approached him nicely online and was basically like, that was complete overkill, man. Like, you're a big influencer. A lot of people are watching you. Yeah. Uh, maybe you shouldn't go so extreme because you can get hypothermia. You can right. die, you know, from excessive cold. So he was approached by some people, and I think he kind of understood um, after that, okay, you know, I don't need to be a Superman yeah. anymore in this because it is a diminishing return. You know, you don't want to do it to the point where you're spending half your day trying to warm up again. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you want to get your dose. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger unless it kills you. So there's a fine line. And, and as far as like <laughs> minutes spent in the cold plunge, what is that fine line? Where, where should people start? Give like the beginner's yeah. guide to it. Beginners, I think in the 50s. 50 is, degrees. 50 to 59 degrees is an awesome place to start. And that feels like probably a cold ocean. Right? Yes. For people, okay. Cold ocean. And within a couple minutes, uh, you start getting that fight or flight. And then after maybe like five to six minutes, you get a really nice dose. Depending, of course, if the water is moving. If it's still water, you may need to be in there much longer. Yeah. But I think starting in the 50s is great. Okay. I think shooting for... How many minutes? Yeah. The research is suggesting, this is Susanna Soberg's research, 11 minutes per week. In her cohort, she was also doing sauna sessions with those people for about 57 minutes per week. Okay. But it does seem like there is a threshold... You know, if you're at 59 or below Fahrenheit for 11 minutes per week, you're getting that metabolic activation or your body's going through some type of adaptive response. And you can break that up however you want. Yes. Yeah. One of the hardest things that we had to do for this podcast is something so simple. It's to get chairs. We had been using these plastic chairs and they just weren't cutting it. And not only were they ugly, but they were also massively uncomfortable. So when we had the founders of Sundays on the podcast, it only made sense for us to get new podcast chairs. So they shipped us a set of count on me dining chairs. So if you're interested in upgrading your chairs too, whether that be in your house, office, podcast studio, or anywhere in between, check out the link in the description to pick some up yourself. We can't recommend Sunday's chairs enough. Just to go back to the people, if they're new to it and they're in the 50 degrees, how long should they be in that before they go into the 40 degree area? Or does it even matter? It's all based on your journey and your tolerance at that time. I think, um, like I had one customer I was talking to yesterday, he started in the 50s and his goal was, okay, each week I'm going to go down a degree. Okay. You know, I'm going to give myself that grace. Yeah. And he started in the high 50s, now he's at 44. Okay. And he likes it at 44. Yeah. And that's, his, that's where he's at. We experimented a little bit. We, we did this thing where I think we, we put it up to like 50 or like 48. And the beginning shock is still there, but, and we all do six minutes. At the end of it, the six, it's better at a lower temperature. We, we kind of concluded that. Like, we all felt better at a lower temperature for six minutes. So then we did this thing where we did it in, like, the 30s. Like, the thir it was, like, 38 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, interesting where the initial shock was more than the 42 degrees. But then it was kind of the same. Like, after the six minutes, it didn't feel very different to, like, the 41 degree range. Interesting. And so now we just keep it in the four, like, it's, like, I think 41 right now. And it'll fluctuate between 40 and 42. Mm -hmm. At Blue Cube, I go in every day with uh, Cheyenne, and she's a bodybuilder, mm -hmm. and she loves the cold because of what it does to her body and the priming it does. I definitely think the colder temperature leads to a more acute fight or flight, mm -hmm. and definitely I think temperature matters a lot in terms of if you want to get that 
maximum dose. But again, this is for someone like who you have to build up to that, right? You right. can't just do that your first time right? and then expect everything to be fine. You may have a crazy response. When it comes to like the different versions you guys have, how many different versions do you have? Why the different versions? So we have the Malibu inline and the Core Chill for now. There may be some other products that we release. Uh, the Core Chill was inspired. We wanted to create like almost like a sub brand, something that could be pure residential. It doesn't have as much chilling power but something that we can have just for residential purposes. The Malibu is almost like our overbuilt flagship uh, type of product with the full deck, full chilling horsepower. And then the inline, this was putting the guts in line with the tub. Uh, we were inspired by like cars. That's why we called it inline. Inline motor, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, like, like inline, inline motor, exactly. Yeah. And people, some people appreciate that look okay. more than the Malibu. And they can, you can change the temperature on all of them? Yes. And does any other company do that? Or are you guys the only one where you can change the temperature? You can change the temperature on the other ones. They just have not embraced uh, flow rate as much as we have. Yeah. We really embrace that because we think that that contributes to that pinnacle cold exposure experience. Yeah. Other companies, not they haven't, they haven't, done they that. haven't pivoted. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to be the standard. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it, by the way. <laughs> the flow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I've grown to love it, but at the beginning, yeah. I'm like, fuck this. Like, I just... Yeah, because you definitely feel it. It's, there's definitely, definitely a difference. Get an intensity factor from it, and give people a window into the, the price of each of each of your existing units. So we we start off with very high end Malibu at twenty seven thousand right now, and then our core chill is at sixteen thousand. So that's pretty much our range. We want to go down market eventually, mm -hmm. but just given our capacity constraints and wanting to build uh, with integrity, we're kind of uh, stair stepping that. And then for the people like that, I, I get texts all the time around like, yeah. which cold plunge do I get and why, right? And then I'm and then I'm the guy that becomes like the spokesperson for the blue cube. How do you view that? What do you say to these individuals, in a way where it's like they're all good, mm -hmm. they're all different. Here's why. Like, what's the sales pitch or what is the the differentiator besides the flow? Obviously the flow. Right. But if you're someone who's just buying one. You don't even know the, what the flow is for. Right. You're thinking the flow is just for f filtration or uh, you're just making things up. Right. So no one un at that level, that buyer doesn't understand the value of the flow yet. Maybe in a few years they will or a few months. Right. But for, for that person that's just like shopping based on price, what, what do you? On price, it's, you know, we're not cheap. We're not built cheap. It's hard to convince somebody just based on price alone. But as far as other feature sets that I think we're really competitive in, uh, ergonomics. So no other company has a tub that's really uh, slanted where you can set, get into a set and rest position, uh, comfortably extend your, your feet out, comfortably do a full plunge, easily accessible at 28 inches uh, tall. Like some of the other companies, you either have to high step too much or you're going to be low stepping. For the lower end models, the guts are completely exposed on the side. And it's not made out of, you know, Schedule 40 piping. If there's any, let's say, failure points in some of the other machines, it's an arm and a leg just to replace the, the parts versus having unions, easily replaceable pumps or chilling motor if something were to fail. So I think as far as serviceability, accessibility of the parts, ergonomics, and overall experience of the cold plunge, we are superior. If someone values that, they're going to get a blue cube. If they're looking for the most cost effective way just to start doing cold exposure, I would say, yeah, we're not. Yeah. We're not going to provide that value to them. What do you think the future is for the company? Like, what are you guys working on now? How are orders coming in? Is it, is it bananas? Because obviously we're still in a craze. It's definitely bananas. And the next step is getting a larger facility, getting uh, more machinery so we can have our, our manpower be more effective and efficient on the job. If someone orders one today, how long would it take for oh, them to like arrive? 12, 14 weeks. Oh, yeah, wow. lead, lead time is definitely a killer in this. Because of all the craftsmen, the wood. Yeah. And, yeah. And so we want more machinery. Again, not to eliminate the hands-on, but to allow them to do more. Yeah. yeah. How big is your space now, the manufacturing space? It's around 3,000 square feet. It's not that Oh, that's small. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we started pretty humble. Wow. Yeah, like you guys total... totally need a bigger space. Yeah. We like to say we're in a barn in Redmond. It's not really a barn, but feels like it. And per yeah, 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 pretty much. I want to go down the the rabbit hole of 
uh, athletic performance. I know we were talking a little bit before this. You know, I got introduced to cold lunges in college when I was a swimmer and we would do our practices and then we would go down into the physical therapy room where they had a cold pool and we would just sit there and I think it was in the, like the 60 degree range. So we were down there for like 15 minutes at a time. And so I always associated it with recovery. And I'm curious if there's a benefit to doing it before a workout, just as there is doing it after a workout to reduce inflammation and swelling. From my personal experience, yes. From that of, of several of my customers who are either like Olympic athletes or uh, professional basketball players, it does seem like it increases both stamina and power. Hmm. And if you do it before, if you, if you do it before, or if you're just on a schedule of, okay. of doing it, why there's a lot of, I think, uh, reasons perhaps why, but it does seem like the mitochondrial biogenesis or uncoupling that occurs where your mitochondria gets so freaked out. It literally, they literally divide yeah. and you have greater density of brown fat or even browning of muscle. So you, you just have more mitochondria density in your cells as a result of cold plunging over time. And if mitochondria are the battery centers of our cells, it kind of is logical to conclude that we can have more energy output as a result of that. So for power, for stamina, I do think there's going to be evidence suggesting that it does increase those. I would imagine, though, that you'd also need some amount of time after leaving the cold plunge before you start working out like you need time to warm up and loosen up your muscles again because like if you go you obviously don't want to go from a cold plunge into a workout because that's a great way for to injure yourself because everything's so stiff and you're still trying to recover from that and i would have to imagine like you know at least from my own experience like at least like an hour or two in between just to just to get the body loose enough to work out again after that Depends on the person. It could be even as little as like 10, 20 minutes. How's your snap back? Have you paid attention to like you go into the cold plunge and then yeah. you're in that state of, of being cold. You feel it going through your veins. You're trying to adjust. How long does it take for you? It depends on, on the, the day. So like I've done it on cold rainy days here and it takes a lot longer because I don't have the residual heat from the sun to warm me up. And I on those days, I will be shivering for up to 45 minutes after the cold plunge. On warmer days, I can be fine within like 20 minutes and like start to feel like myself again. And so it really like cuts the time in half depending on the temperature outside. But I've, I've done it personally where I think I cold plunged and then I two hours later went for a run and I felt great. And so that's where my own like two hours for a workout, kind of like, okay, I need to give myself ample time afterwards. That's, that's kind of like my snapback was between just trying it out before a workout as opposed to after a workout. Keep studying your body. I think it, it's different for everybody. For me, it's around, uh, let's say I cold plunge, I come back in, put on the gym clothes or whatever it is that I want to work out in, start stretching. Yeah, around 15, 20 minutes, I would say my body's in a position. It still feels cold, yeah. but I'm able to start working out for sure. And I think everyone's going to be different. To your point, some people may be really stiff. I'm probably like 30 minutes, I think, probably 30 to 45. If it's cold, I'll be shivering for a while, actually. Mm -hmm. And if it's like hot outside and I'm in the sun, it's still maybe like 30 minutes. Owen's like immediately. Like he's, it's amazing, actually. He's like fine immediately. It's kind of crazy. Even like, with longer uh, plunge, plunge sessions? Yeah, like I feel like he's cheating. Exposure. Like he's just like, like I'm shivering and he's like, what are you, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go get a coffee. Like he's like, fine. Super weird. Uh, some people, I don't know if you have Scandinavian descent. Yeah, some people are just really cold adapted. Wow. By, by nature. Okay. Their ancestors had to deal with it. Some people can't even put it in their hands. Yeah. Because the, the blood flow is so bad. Is it because of the receptors on your hands and your feet? Uh, that your palms, and your body's or? making trade-offs. So when you're in that level of cold, warming up your heart and your core is more important than your hands. Okay. So your body's literally like, oh, we don't need hands here. We got <laughs> we got, we got to keep the core warm. Oh, wow. And then my hands used to hurt like crazy. They still do. But I like it because I noticed my hands run uh, hotter. So like my ability to tolerate cold in my hands has increased dramatically from incorporating it into the plunge instead of instead of being out because i used to do that too my my hands used to hurt like crazy okay how did you and thomas first connect we connected here in la uh santa monica specifically 
I was in another startup in the time, a uh, cannabis space startup, and he was going through a divorce and my co-founder was neighbors with him. So he was literally walking outside. He was looking kind of depressed and disheveled. And my co-founder was literally like, hey man, is, is everything okay? And he came over and he's like, you know what? Everything is not okay. I'm going through a divorce. This woman's taking all my stuff. Like, you know, I'm being uh, cut in half, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, how are you guys? Like, what's up? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we told him about our, what we're doing. And he comes from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, he loves startups. So immediately he was like, oh, have you thought about fundraising like this? Have you thought about the customers like this? And we started driving and he would come over and like cook dinner and just talk business with us. And... After the, that uh, cannabis startup kind of folded, we raised capital, but in 2020, kind of all cannabis investment dried, yeah. and uh, we were going to be partnering with Ease and some of the larger delivery companies, and they all kind of uh, chopped all of their officers and were exposed for b burning money. So we decided not to continue, but that's how I met Thomas, and then he kept hounding me that he's building this coal plunge in Oregon, come visit him, come visit him, come visit him, and finally I did. Wow. What's some of the most interesting science that you've stumbled into? I think we're going through uh, evolutionary renaissance. I think Darwin is almost like coming back in a very big way and smacking all of us in the face. I think the hormetic stress response is by far what this decade I think is going to be known for. Hot, cold, fasting, exercise in combination is I think the ultimate biohack. Of course, good food, uh, sleep, sunlight, uh, family, relationships, whatever it is. But I feel like practicing the hormetic stresses on a daily basis is where is where it's at. Interesting. Do you have any like anecdotal information on, on how your client's life has been impacted? Like just from a relationship standpoint, so not recovery, not just just from a purely like I'm a better human type thing. I'll, I'll show you the video after this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I had a customer give a testimony on Monday. Uh, he calls it a, this is a game changer. He thinks it's a game, ch complete game changer. His family's convinced that he's a much better human being. Mm -hmm. And he thinks that the cold is so powerful. Like if someone is going through this every day, it fundamentally changes your chemical makeup. Mm -hmm. Again, he's not quoting signs. He's not saying this is guaranteed, but from his experience, he's like, my chemical makeup is clearly different. Yeah. Like how I neurally perceive the world is different. My wife would attest to that about me. She would say the same I think, thing? I think I literally just became a better husband. Like I was easier, I was easier to get along with. It was weird. Like I wasn't stressed as much. Yeah. You know, I think, I think as entrepreneurs and you're doing, when you're trying to like, you know, hit home runs, let's say, when you're going for it, there's a lot of stressors on your life. There's something about cold plunging that resets those stressors for you. And so then life doesn't seem nearly as bad. Right. It seems more fun, in fact. And so I've just, I just became like more fun in her eyes. That's fascinating. It's really interesting. For me, I just thought I was like, like things didn't really bother me as much. Right. Because it's like I just cold plunged. There's nothing worse than that. Right. Whatever happens now is it doesn't really matter that much. I'm not right. in cold water freezing. You know, it's interesting. And so I, I'd say she, she'd agree. I love how she noticed that in you too. I, I think this goes back to the whole, I think the mental change is going to be what's talked about because yes, for athletes and all that, the, the change is profound and it can save careers. It can elongate their ability to be competitive, whatever it is, but having your wife say, Hey, yeah. you know, Diego's different. Diego, he's listening to he me drinks more. more wine he, now. He, <laughs> he drinks more wine now. <laughs> Nothing phases him. Yeah. It's weird. hundred percent. That's what's going to be talked about. When you think about what Tony, so Tony Robbins has been doing that. Remember, do you know his routine where he'll like dunk himself in hot and then cold, but you can just like, it's a, it's a quick dunk and then he's up. Like okay. It's almost like a hole in his backyard that he has where he just goes in and out, but it's, it's quick. He does it like three times, I think. Hot, cold, hot, cold, or whatever he does. But three, every morning, but okay. it's quick. Like, so I would say maybe a collective 10 seconds of, of dunking. Okay. And then he's done. He's been doing it forever. He thought it was like a game changer. I, I guess the question I'm trying to get at is, is there any difference of being in there for what Tony Robbins does, which is like a quick, quick dunk, and then he's done, or someone who's like doing it for six minutes? What have you seen in terms of like the time? Does that really matter at all? Because the shock is the same. The shock is the same. I think it depends on what temp, and it depends, because you probably experienced this too, where you know you got your dose. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that happens for people. It could be 20 seconds. It could be 30 seconds, 40. It could be up to a minute. Yeah. But you know when, you, when you're when you like, I got it. Yeah. 
like I'm good. I'm ready to exit because even if I stay in for another minute, great, but I already feel completely reset. Yeah. So I, I go for that feeling. When that feeling is, I think it's different for people. Yeah. But at like 37 degrees, people should be getting that between 20 to 40 seconds. So I, so I would say a dip and then jump out yeah. is probably not nearly as effective as like sit with yourself for at least 20 seconds. Because that 20 seconds is enough to, you know, your adrenaline spikes, the whole reset occurring if the temp is low enough. So that's interesting because we always talk about it uh, amongst the team where it's like the first minute to a minute and a half absolutely sucks. And then after then, it doesn't really matter. And so are you suggesting that maybe we should like after that minute and a half is over and we start to like get used to that feeling of cold? Like, you know, should we just hop out at that point? It, again, it depends on you sound a lot like Thomas, by the way, because uh, for Tommy, it's like after the two minutes, he goes to like another uh, where he gets adjusted. And for him, it's like after four to five minutes, then again, the adrenaline spikes and it's like a new wall or a new thing you have to overcome. And I definitely think if you have the capacity, explore that. You know, don't take what I'm saying as the gospel or what anyone's sure. saying. So it's it, very it, indi- individualistic. Yes. Got it. It is very. And it's, it's almost like weight training, right? Yeah. What is the right weight training routine? Well, it's based on your strength, how long you've been training, yeah. what your goal is. I feel like cold is kind of the same way. So as a business, yes. obviously we're experiencing a moment in time where the cold plunge is becoming a, a thing. People are aware of it. There's enough people talking, a lot of influencers talking about it. How do you guys approach marketing and selling, you know, your specific, right? You have competitors, obviously. And so how do you guys think about that? What is the overall strategy around just getting these into more homes and more more gyms, more spas? Our next campaign is we want to take, we have awesome customers already and just showcasing, you know, the high end in their homes, how it does complete uh, your sauna, your pool set up, your spa set up. I had an architect, several architects tell me they think every high home is going to be complete only if it has pool spa sauna and cold plunge Mm -hmm. so it's almost going to be a standard Mm -hmm. for the high-end home and i think highlighting that standard and showcasing that standard in in beautiful homes high-end residences and resorts um, is something that we need to do much much better job of so is it more like marketing social media more videos more yes and more generated content yeah and showcasing, you know, people using it in the high-end homes. Yeah. All right, Dave, what else should people know? What else should they know about Blue Cube? What's the future look like? Where can they buy one? Visit us online, uh, bluecubebass.com. Call me up anytime. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, I think, picks up literally straight from the website. Yeah. We could do a FaceTime over how these things are made. And in general, I, I think everyone should just start, you know, cold shower and slowly graduate. Yeah. You guys were great. I'll, I'll share the story. We'll wrap on this on how this happened. So I, I wanted to get one. And so I called just the number on the website because the only question I had was, will it fit through a, a normal door? Obviously, we have a studio here. And so I wanted to make sure it fit because so many times these things don't. And so I get on the phone and I think Thomas picked up and then he passed the phone to you. And, and you guys are like, tell me everything. Where's it going? Oh, you have a studio. What's the studio for? And then when I was like, guys, I, j- I just want to know if it's going to go through the door. That's it. And you're like, no, no, where's it going? Like, show us. Show us pictures. And then we were on the phone maybe like 20 minutes. And you're like, oh, you have a team. You got to get this one. You got to get this one. And I'm like, I didn't call you to be upsold. I just called you to see if it fit through the door. <laughs> and they're like, what's, you got a logo? And I'm like, oh, my God, what is happening? And then it all worked out. And you guys, you guys gave me a sweet deal. How did you find us? Speaking of, uh... yeah, no, I was. I think I had just narrowed it down to the two I was gonna look at, or maybe just the one. I just like the look of it. You guys had a cool look, and then the flow. I realized the flow was important. And honestly, the thing that I was looking for the most was, obviously, there's the team. To me, it's like it's only fun if you share these things. And so the the temperature was a huge one for me. Being able to adjust the temperature, I thought was was like game changer. Sure. Um, because I you don't want to force someone to. I, I guess get into something that's maybe you can handle, but someone else can't. Right. And so that was the thing I was looking for. And I was like, oh, this, they have it and they seem to know what they're doing. Well, I'm glad you found us. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. No, dude. thanks for having me, man. If you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. 
three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over a hundred episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.